Hello for you and welcome to your next lesson on polynomial functions. This is just an add-on to the last lesson and this should be fairly short and sweet. We're going to talk about the difference between odd and even function and what it means about its symmetry. So the difference between this should say an odd and even function. Now the first thing I want to tell you is when I say a function is odd or even that doesn't just mean that its leading coefficient or its degree um, its leading term or its degree is odd or even. It has a little bit more to it than that. A polynomial function is called an even function if the exponent of each term of the equation is even. The value of the function will be the same if you subbed in a positive value or its opposite negative value. For instance, say I have y equals uh, 2x to the fourth plus 3x squared. That would be an even function because the exponents all have even exponents on them. It would also be an even function, or from the very definition of even function, let's say I subbed a positive 1 in here, I get 2 times 1 to the 4th plus 3 times 1 squared. Well, 1 to the 4th is just 1, so I have 2, and 1 squared is just 1, so I have 2 plus 3 is 5. Now, let's say I did it with negative 1s, I get 2 times negative 1 to the 4th, plus 3 times negative 1 squared. Well, what happens when you have a negative number to a positive ex to an even exponent? It turns it positive. So that's going to become 2 plus 3 and it's going to give us the same answer of 5. Now, I hope you're not actually writing all of this down because I'm not I didn't leave room here for that. I left room for a sketch of an even function. So let's get rid of that. And let's think about what kind of function that's going to give us. If I plug in a positive number, and this is the y I get, when I plug in the same negative number, so I have to go back the same distance I went forward, I'm going to get the same answer. So when I plug in a positive, and I go there, if I get a negative, I go just as high. Let's say when I plug a positive in, I get a value right there, then when I plug a negative one in, I get a value at the same height. Again, pull in a positive one, and I get a value down here. When I pull in the negative one, I get a value, it has the same y value. So it's symmetric, this is like a mirror line, it's symmetric in the or in the y-axis. So it will be something like this, and in fact I have a better one to show you right here. Here's a nice one and we can see we, it meets our criteria for being of even degree as well which is good. You can't have an even function that has an odd degree. That doesn't work. But you can see the end behavior shows us that it goes off in the same direction so it must be of even degree. If we want to know what the degree of it is we can count the maxims and mins. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so it must at least be of degree eight. And when I plug in a value of x or a value of negative x, it doesn't matter, my y value is equal. And remember, f at x is another, is just a fancy way of saying y. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether I plug in a negative x or a positive x, my y value is the same thing. And so it's symmetric about the y-axis. Same thing down here, well not the same thing, but similarly, uh, a polynomial function is called an odd function if the exponent of each term of the equation is odd. The value of the function would have the opposite sign if you subbed in a positive value of its opposite negative value. That's a very wordy way of saying this. Let's say here's my function. All of the exponents are negative. So y, er, not negative, odd, y equals 4 x to the fifth minus 3x cubed. Now what happens if I put in a 1? If I put in a 1, I get 4 minus 3, right? Because 1 to the fifth and 1 cubed is just 1. And so then I get 1. What happens if I put in a negative 1? Well, negative 1 to the fifth is going to be negative 1. So when I multiply by 4, I get negative 4. 
negative 1 cubed is negative 1, and when I multiply that by negative 3, I get positive 3. So we get the same thing, but the signs are switched. I had a positive 4 and a negative 3, now I've got a negative 4 and a positive 3, so my answer here is negative 1. So when I sub in an x value that is the opposite sign of the positive x value, my y value is the negative of the x value that of the y value when I plugged in the positive value. Okay, so that's what this says over here is that the y values are opposite signs. And remember that this is just a y, so this says that y and negative y. Okay, it's the opposite signs. Whoops. Now I'm going to pull in what that looks like. Um, in just a second, but let's think about what that looks like. Uh, this says that if I put in a value of x and I get this value of y, that if I put the negative value of that in, I get the same value of y, so it's this far away from the origin, but now it's down here. So it's the same value of y, and that doesn't even look like the same value of y. Let's try to make it look a little bit more realistic down here. So if I put in this y and I'm up here, when I put in, or sorry, this x and I'm up here, when I put in the negative value of x, then I'm down here. So what we end up getting is something that looks like that. So we're getting something that is symmetric about the origin, in other words, point symmetry. Um, and remember, all this thing says is that if I plug in a positive value of x, and it's um, negative opposite value, um, what I'm going to get is the opposite values of y as well. So let's get rid of this and show a better picture. Here's one. This is a nice one. This shows, and if I just give a little demonstration, if I flip it around, it looks pretty much the same as it started to, started with. Um, which means that it has symmetry about the origin. Okay, so how do we find those out if we don't have a graph? So determine if the following functions are even, odd, or neither. So what's this say? If these were in expanded form, we could just look at them and see if all the exponents were all odd or all even. That would be simple. But expanding them is a lot of work. There's a better way. We're going to put negative x in place of x and see if we can simplify in any way. So here we're going to have to put negative x in place of x and do some simplification. So let's take a look. Um, this is our f at x value. I want to put in f at negative x. So when I put in f at negative x, I get negative x minus 4 negative x plus 3 and 2 times negative x minus 1. That is a negative x in there. So uh, I got to simplify, so I'm going to take negatives out of here. So I'm going to take a negative out of this bracket. If I take a negative out of this bracket, I've got negative x minus 4. I'm going to put that in a big set of brackets. It's going to multiply by this one. I'm going to take the negative out of this one. So I get negative x minus 3. And then I'm going to take the negative out of this one. So when I take the negative out of that one, I've got negative um, 2x plus 1 when I pulled the negative out of it. So now these three negatives can go together, and the whole thing is just negative. So x minus 4, x minus 3, and 2x plus 1. So this is our value of f at negative x. Now, if this were odd, f at negative x would have to be exactly the same thing as f at x, except with a negative in front of it. So let's compare. Um, we have the negative out front, but that's the only, the only nice thing. Oh, and my, I should have, this should have become a positive, so I get a little slip there. Okay, um, that's the only thing that's that's matching up with what we want it to be. We have the negative out front. 
but here I have an x plus 4, and here I have an x minus 4. Here I have an x plus 3, and here I have an x minus 3. And I get 2x plus 1 and a 2x minus 1. So this is not the case. f at x does not equal, um, f at negative x does not equal f at x with a negative in front of it. So this is not odd. For it to be even, I would have to get exactly the same thing. And obviously, those two things are not exactly the same thing. So this is a case for neither. So now let's try this one. Uh, for part b, I'm going to evaluate f at negative x. And I'm going to go through the same thing that I did before. I'm going to put in negative x, and we have plus 2, uh, negative x minus 2. We're going to have a 1 minus x here and then a negative x minus 1. So let's go through the motions of pulling out negatives. So I get the negative 2 out front, and then I'm going to make a big bracket here. And this bracket, I'm going to pull a negative out of it. So if I pull a negative out of the bracket, what's left in the bracket is x minus 2. And that's in the square bracket. Now I'm going to do that again. I'm going to pull the negative out of here, and I get negative x plus 2. Then when I pull the negative out of this bracket, I have negative 1 plus x, or x minus 1, I'm going to write it as. And lastly, when I pull the negative out of that bracket, I get um, an x plus 1. So now I'm going to take my negatives out. I got 1, 2, 3, 4 negatives to pull out, but 4 negatives are going to cancel each other out. So all I'm left with out front is still this negative 2, and all of these negatives cancel. And the, since all the negatives cancel, I'm just left with the brackets. The brackets are x minus 2, x plus 2, x minus 1, and x plus 1. Now let's take a comparison. Um, if this were odd, if this were an odd function, then this would be exactly the same as f at x, except with a negative in front of it. Well, or, since f at x is negative, this one would have to be positive, because it has to be the opposite sign. Now, it's not the opposite sign, it's got the negative in front of it, so it's definitely not odd. For it to be even, it has to be exactly the same function, when I stick a negative x in, as when I just had f at x. And so if we take a look at this, it's on its way to doing that. I've got a negative 2 and a negative 2, an x minus 2 and an x minus 2, an x plus 2 and an x plus 2, an x minus 1, an x minus 1, and a 1 plus x and an x plus 1, but that's the same as 1 plus x. I've got all of the same factors. They're not in the same order, but that doesn't matter. I've got all of the same factors, so this is in fact exactly the same function as when we just had an x in it, when we have a negative x in it, which means that it's even. And that wraps up our odd and even functions, and so you have a handful of questions to do on odd and even functions.